um, like Joe mentioned just now, we, it's something that we didn't expect to get this far. Uh, but of course, at the same time, um, we would like to take this opportunity in that case to actually really accelerate what we wanted to do. Uh, because for us, is even though it's, there are some disruptions of expansion uh, due to the COVID lockdown and things like that, overseas, I mean, um, but we will want to still go ahead uh, full force with our kind of expansion plans in the overseas market. So I think to us, that's actually the, I would say, is the biggest advantage you're looking at. Yeah, um, in the coming years, in the coming future, we would like to expand within the region, especially the South Asian, Southeast Asian region. And uh, based on this expansion, we will require some local point of presence within the countries that we operate in. So uh, as we move deeper into the markets itself, we will be expected to set up data centers and our, our servers will be there. So this is something really welcome that uh, we can actually experiment or even use uh, Huawei's infrastructure for all those new markets that we are about to open. Yeah. Uh, at the same time, uh, we also would like to uh, seek the opportunity to work with uh, Huawei Technologies to, to see whether there's a potential to incorporate some of these technologies as part of our solution offerings uh, to our customers. In my opinion, I think um, in terms of ecosystem, in most places, of course, there's never ending um, things that we can say complain about, but rather, I mean, complaining about things. I would say over here, we have probably a fa fair share of issues as everyone else in other countries are facing, um, except for certain markets which are, has higher concentra concentration of uh, what we call uh, VCs in that sense. Because I would say probably for us over here, it is easy to start things, uh, business processes, ease of doing business, those have no problem. But in order to access to capital markets, um, we are talking about venture capitalists. In terms of valuation of the company, probably I would say our local options here are a bit more conservative as compared to, let's say, some other places where we are hurt. Uh, that can be a bit more aggressive in that sense to support. I will take uh, inclusivity from the uh, AI point of view, since this is something that we are doing. So in fact, uh, if we look at the past, I mean traditionally, uh, if we examine financing use cases, um, probably this topic can be a bit sensitive, but it is a uh, unwritten known facts that there are certain biases when it comes to loan approval, financing product approval. Um, but when it is being automated using technology or AI, AI is meant to be less biased, I mean, we know technically there are some AI bias issues in a technical sense, but when, in a way, actually, AI bias issue can also be resolved uh, using technology so that to the robots, uh, there's no color, the colors option is taken out, there's no gender, the gender option is taken out. So that's something that we are looking at in terms of, uh, uh, we can't change things probably, but we can improve the situation in terms of inclusion. Good morning, everyone. I'm Tian Sun, the Chief Operating Officer and the Co-Founder of Innovative. Today, I will be pleased to share with you Irma's OK Dog. OK Dog is not a medical doctor you go to for your sore throat or your illness, uh, but rather it is actually an AI-based algorithm to verify Southeast Asian's identity document. In 2016, when we started doing the EKYC journey, we started it off using the optical characters recognitions, also better known as OCR. So OCR helped to speed up um, data entry of identity details, but it does not verify the authenticity. But this is exactly what OKDoc API is doing. OKDoc API does not require any dependency on a front-end channel. It works with any mobile app of any platform because it's a server-to-server -server technology. In Southeast Asia, each of the document would have a different appearance and a different format. We are using artificial intelligence, a few techniques such as image processing, um, as well as the um, deep learning techniques to train algorithms to detect automatically uh, visual compliance, security features, and the content tempering. Founded 10 years ago, Innovative has a decade of experience serving the enterprises in digitization. And we are currently the, I would say, the EKYC solution provider that is leading in the domain knowledge for telecommunication sectors by serving 10 telecommunication service companies today in customer registration process. 
aside from the full IP ownerships, aside from full IP ownership, yeah, with a patent pending technologies, we also have resources to implement services as well as local representatives across eight ASEAN countries today. Okay, Doc API is delivered as SaaS business model, and the transactions goes by commitment in a contract. So on the ceiling rate itself, it can be as high as little as 20 cent US dollars, and it will go down more aggressively as a customer contractual commitment grows. So in 2018, when we started EKYC, um, Yudu was the fully digital telco that we have started uh, to serve, and we are probably the first one to actually do a fully digital telco in Malaysia, together with a partner, Yudu, as well. 2019, we launched OKDoc API to mitigate the challenge of identity document fraud. And within the first year, we have served 1 million transactions. Last year, we continue to grow the transactions by 250%, serving 3.5 million transactions by replicating the use cases to more customers, as well as more industries, from fintech to wealth tech and digital signing. And this year, we are on track to register another 100% growth to serve 7.5 million OKDoc transactions. This acceleration is driven by two main factors. Number one, a switch in customer behavior from conventional channel to digital, as well as the multiplier effect that every one of us is a potential user for more than one EKYC transaction throughout the year. So on the landscape of coverage, yeah, solution coverage by number of Southeast Asian countries versus how vertical or horizontal the solution is, we have a very well-known uh, competitor in Malaysia, CTOS Credit Bureau, um, as well as uh, one connect from China that actually serving, supporting four countries in ASEAN. But these are the niche solution providers. Among the peers of more horizontal solution applicability, uh, we have Zendity, who is acquired by Grand, uh, Green Packet recently, on Fido from UK, uh, as well as Jumio from US, serving three, four, and five ASEAN countries, respectively. Leading the pack today is uh, innovative. We are supporting nine ASEAN countries. Um, at the same time, we have seen 35% less fraud compared to EKYC without identity document check. At the same time, um, our information security is also certified ISO 27001. Innovative is a financially sustainable company. Last year, we have received 1 million ringgit grant from MDEC um, to actually accelerate the global market readiness of OKDOC. According to organic growth projection, we are looking at supporting 20 million transactions by year 2023, yeah, within a year, and looking at the revenues of 25 million. This is supported by growth strategy of replicating our successful case studies across ASEAN, be the local in every market. And in ASEAN, we have approximately 458 million adult populations. We are targeting to support 10% of this by year 2025. This year, we started to grow our market out of Malaysia, Indonesia, Singapore. In addition, we're actually growing into the Philippines, Cambodia, Thailand, and Vietnam at the same time. So within the first quarter of this year, we are glad to share that we have already received order from Philippines as well as Cambodia. This partnership, we are looking at three um, verticals of acceleration. Number one, the speed of go-to-market. Number two, R&D acceleration, especially in non-Latin characters. And thirdly, um, in terms of local cloud replications across more regions that we're serving. Innovative today has already grown beyond the bootstrapping startup organization. We have dedicated uh, head of department in charge of respective roles from sales and marketing, uh, software engineering, R&D, finance, admin, and all. Each of these HOD has more than 10 years of experience in their respective role. Uh, George, the CEO, Joe, the Chief Commercial Officer, both of them have more than 15 years of enterprise sales 
and business development experience. Myself, graduated from a software engineering background, has always been the bridge between the technical and the business. And I have also completed um, a machine learning course from Stanford University during the early years of innovative ventures into AI. Our head of product, Nathan, is also one of the IEEE journal reviewers. With that, I would like to wrap up my presentation and thank you for your time. Fantastic. Thank you, OK Doc. With time still left to spare. Judges, do you have any questions at all? Hi, uh, thank you for the presentation. I'd like to dive in a bit more on your tech. So what really made your solution different, especially in the ASEAN um, situation? So first of all, uh, in terms of machine learning, a lot of time it has to do with uh, access to samples and data. So um, throughout a number of years before this, we have managed to actually perform some POCs uh, across a few countries. And that actually is the stepping stone for us to get into, uh, I would say it's like the bowling concept where you have the head pin. Yeah? So we have tackled the head pin, and that's the reason why now we are ready to serve the nine ASEAN countries. And secondly, in this space, it's also quite important to, um, to, own, to, to own the IP fully. Uh, because a lot of time, this kind of technology, some other vendors are probably rely on someone else's. And in that sense, you have certain dependencies that you probably cannot tackle across when it comes to commercialization. Because ASEAN, even though it's like 10 countries, but we are talking about every market having a different appetite in commercialization as well. So I would say that is actually our main difference. So would you say, so the core AI engine in terms of OCR and, and recognition, is that something you develop over the data set that you collect? Um, yeah, more specifically is the document image processing. Those are something that we develop on ourselves. Okay. And how do you go around the data sovereignty or data privacy issues when you're literally collecting data from all over the place? Okay, very good. Um, so for us, our EKYC cloud or the OKDoc cloud only is meant for processing. Uh, what I mean by processing is that you send an image to the server. The server is meant to do one thing, which is return to you um, the outcome of the verifications. But it is not designed to store personally identifiable information. The personally identifiable information will still be stored by the company that implements this technology. So in that case, we actually don't have to deal with data residency. OK, but you have to convince the, the client that you have the right mechanism that data will not be uh, retained after yeah, processing. Yeah, that's right. So that's the reason why uh, last year we embarked on the journey of ISO 27001. Uh, recently, in January this year, we have been certified fully for our process. OK. I would like the other judge to ask a question first. Yeah, I, I have a question. It's like, um, because uh, to do this EKYC is not really tough uh, with nowadays technology. But of course, you also mentioned your key differentiators. But uh, my, my question is like, in your opinion, uh, will the customer willing to pay you if their internal development team can do something almost similar? And how do you justify that? Yeah. So first of all, um, it depends on whether the company is meant to do this business. Like for example, telco, they are meant to sell services. Yeah? They, don't, they are not designed to actually develop or own the artificial intelligence algorithm. And secondly, when something goes wrong, there must be someone who is responsible to it. So in our experience as well, a lot of time when it comes to, um, especially the significant contracts, uh, we also hold certain liability mm -hmm. in terms of accuracy and things like that. Yeah, so you, you, you give a very good answer, right? So with the liability that you cover, do you actually have insurance cover of your liability? Yeah, so we actually mitigate the risk by passing on the risk. Okay, got <laughs> it, thanks. So how do you ensure the continuous development of your, of your core uh, solution, uh, especially the, the EKYC becomes really popular? But what, okay. what will keep the service uh, a USP uh, sustainable? Okay, sustainability, I would say, is uh, two aspects. 
So number one, of course, is uh, financially. Uh, that is something that, uh, it, in our principle, business can always be win-win, but it cannot be win-lose. That's something we believe, not just on us as a, a vendor, but both parties as well with the customers. Secondly, when it comes to sustainability, um, we have to also look at it from the, I would say, um, the market potential. So, of course, at the same time, in this case, what we are looking at is that every market that we're looking at, uh, right now we are talking about Southeast Asia, but moving forward, we should not just stop over here. So that's the reason why, um, even though in our roadmap, we are talking about penetrating uh, ASEAN market um, by 2023, um, but at the same time, we are looking at the next region. We may not be ready at the moment, but we're looking at the next region, such as something that is using, uh, let's say, Arabic characters. Um, those, those are the things that we have to continue to look at in order to grow the use cases. Uh, at the same time, some of our customers that we are serving, it's also more of the regional uh, presence kind of customer, like Razorpay as an example. Uh, Razorpay hit, headquarters in Singapore, but they do have presence in many countries. So if you are asking a business, uh, would you want to deal with three EKYC companies across six countries, or would you rather deal with one company across a six country? So that is something that we're looking at as uh, on our advantage. We, we try that to be our advantage. Okay, so if I'm not wrong, the, the large client are telcos and FSIs. Right now, um, our most significant penetration is still telco right now, as of now. Uh, but of course, uh, we are trying to grow into the FSI. Uh, last year was the year that we saw the most significant expansion in the FSI portfolio. Okay, do you see the demands from the small, medium sized companies or digital native startups? Um, if you do see for, that, where, what's your strategy of capturing the market? For SME, it will depend on the type of use cases. Uh, like, for example, if it is a use case that's required by law, then of course, even an SME you will want to use it. But uh, business being business, if it is not required by law, some people may not want to. So for us, the strategy of going into SME may not be so direct, but we will rather work with platform. So like for example, platform, I'm talking about example like digital signing. For us to directly acquire N customers SME for digital signing, that will be very hard. But we are working with a CA, Certificate Authorities in Malaysia, to actually get across to the end market in that case. Um, so in other markets as well, um, overseas expansion, um, our strategy is to go through local. Uh, it may not be a very large company that can do everything, but it needs to have one local technical person who can help to represent us, explain our solution. That is the kind of thing that we're looking at. So that when, because even eventually we are looking at a partnership with Huawei. Huawei's business development or account managers are probably not meant to sell for us. Yeah, it's bring, opening the door, but we need to have capacity ourselves to be able to support your sales channel as well. All right, I do believe we have no further questions, judges. Just a quick check, any questions at all? From Ms. Liu Bo as well, any questions? Of course you can. Please uh, proceed. Uh, yes, uh, I think uh, I wonder if you have any competitors in Malaysia because in China we have a lot of competitors in terms of this kind of business. So I wonder, do you think this kind of business, um, do you have a geographical advantage of this kind of business in Malaysia? Yes, definitely we have competitors. Uh, even though we have started R&D back in 2016, 2018, um, but last year and the year before, which is 2019, the moment when the market sees that the market is ready, so that's when the competitors start to come in as well. Uh, we see that as a, as a good thing for us. Uh, it means that the market is validated, the opportunity is there. Uh, we just have to keep up the game. Yeah, that's something that we are focusing on, to keep up the game because we cannot be derailed too much by uh, the competitors every day. <laughs> Most definitely. Thank you very much. A round of applause for OK Doc, please. As we move deeper into the markets itself, we will be expected to set up data centers and our, our servers will be there. So this is something really welcome that uh, we can actually experiment or even use uh, Huawei's infrastructure for all those new markets that we are about to open. 
At the same time, uh, we also would like to uh, seek the opportunity to work with uh, Huawei Technologies to, to see whether there's a potential to incorporate some of these technologies as part of our solution offerings uh, to our customers.